the fact of her saying that black people are in the condition that they they're in and have been in because of this country and what this country has done. I don't believe that. Good day, great people. Back again with another amazing episode of Snap Political. Hope you are truly finding value and enjoying the episodes. I wanted to tap in to why Black America should break up from the Democratic Party. This was really good. I stumbled upon this and I, I just felt like if now was not a time to speak this and we have been saying this over and over and over again, definitely I felt like this was something great to share, especially in a time such as this. Election is coming up next year and we need to be clear as to who we're voting for and I know I've gotten in the comment section with some of you guys and some of you are you know are, are liberal are pendants and nothing is wrong with that but once again I say no no vote no voice and we need to pick a side uh, unfortunately that's just the way it is we need to pick a side and we need to pick the side that's okay that's going to show the most support it's not going to be perfect don't look for perfection don't look for perfection welcome back to black news tonight it is no secret Many black Americans are disgruntled with the Democratic Party. They feel like they're taken for granted and time and time again uh, voting as the most united block African-Americans are. But at the end, the demands of black people remain unfulfilled by the Democratic leadership. In a recent Newsweek Opinion article, contributor Pamela Denise Long declares it is time for black America to break up with the Democratic Party. She goes on to say if they want our votes, let them earn them. And Pamela Denise Long joins me now. She is diversity, equity, inclusion, and anti-racism trainer. She's also a brilliant writer, clearly. Welcome to the show. Good to see you. You, t you call black Americans voting for the Democratic Party an arranged marriage. Now you're calling mm. for a divorce. Tell me why. Yeah, so it's an arranged marriage because, as I clarified in the article, Black Americans back in the day when Republicans and Democrats kind of switched their platforms didn't really have a choice if they were going to stay engaged with American politics. And at that time in the 60s, obviously, it was very critical that they do. And it's very critical now that Black Americans stay engaged with the political process Amen. as well. Amen. Uh, Democrats have not delivered, even though they've had the House, uh, both houses, as well as the White House. Uh, they haven't delivered specifically for Black Americans and also quite specifically for descendants of slavery who make up the vast majority of the Black American population. You say that while progressives accuse the right of not talking about anti-black racism, when the left does talk about anti-black racism, they do so to use our pain, not for our benefit. That's a quote from you. Uh, it sounds like you're criticizing the kind of performative gestures toward racial justice that we often see from uh, the left. Can you say more about that? Yeah, so, you know, it's both performative in terms of the wordsmithing that happens, as well as in terms of how we haven't disaggregated the data on the impact of the policies that are being implemented at the level that is not to pass or minimize the impact that and responsibility, the impact and responsibility that state as well as regional and local governments have. What I mean by that is I need to see specific implementation plans that show that these diversity policies are actually transforming the lives and economic stability of Black American communities, hmm. Black American homes, and Black American families okay. and workers. So this idea of it being performative as well as it not being precise in who it is intended to impact and how. It is, I think, a dereliction of duty if we levy the responsibility of looking at impact on foundations and not-for-profit organizations. Our government, who created many of the problems, right, that are affecting multi-generational Black Americans, need to be responsible for looking at and developing those metrics, ensuring that that impact is positive. I understand and even agree with the critique of the Democratic Party's relationship to black people. It's exploitative, they take us for granted. Mm -hmm. And at the analytic level, we are a captured electorate. That is to say, they know they got us. If we vote, we vote for them. I get that. But we have a few practical options. That's what people will push back and say, right? That 
the real politic is that we either don't vote, we vote for an alternative party, uh, or we vote for Republicans. And that voting for an alternative party doesn't give us the power to defeat Republicans in, in major elections, maybe in a local election, a mayoralty probably is probably the best case scenario. Um, and that if we vote Republican, or at least hold out the, the, the possibility that we'll vote Republican, that we may get more from the Democratic Party, but we're kind of cutting our nose to spite our face because Republicans don't serve our interest in any way. Not true. Don't agree with that at all. And there's something else that she mentioned that I ne don't necessarily agree with. I understand in regards to policy, in regards to really making, if this is what you say you're going to do, where the, what are the action steps and how are we going to put them in place by when? I get that. However, I don't agree with the fact of her saying that black people are in the condition that they, they're in and have been in because of this country and what this country has done. I don't believe that. Initially, when it came to slavery in the very beginning, of course, and much time after, it was a period where we had to get it together. We had to, you know, it was it was really hard, especially in the South, where we weren't able to materialize things because of the segregation laws. However, fast forward to 2024, I still don't, I, I don't agree with that statement at all because there are too many successful rich black people. There are too many successful black people people in regards to success you can equate success based off of whatever you determine success for yourself but I mean success as they have a home they have transportation they have employment they have the basic necessities that can maintain their household from a single single family home to a mar married couple to a um, house with um, a family with children so I don't agree with that statement, none whatsoever. And I sure don't agree with him in regards to what he's stating about the Republican Party. Absolutely not. So how, as a practical matter, can we leverage our votes in different ways when the options, the alternatives are so bad? Yeah, those are very, very valid points. And I often hear that critique. I think one of the things that we as a people, and I mean that by the American people, one of the things that we've done is we've let the polls just determine the narrative. We have let the polar ends, the extremes of both parties, determine our direction, right? They've been the gatekeepers. The bulk of the American public is in the middle. The bulk of the American public doesn't want ideology. What they actually want is solutions. They actually want the same things Black Americans want, which is for people, families, and communities to be resourced. So that's first, is we, the majority, truly the majority of the American people, have to set the narrative. We, as Black Americans, as well as White Americans, Asian Americans, Latino Americans, all voting uh, Americans, really need to say that it is no longer acceptable that you can determine your party orientation and decide based on that alone which segments of the American population you're going to choose to neglect. The challenge, the new paradigm is we're all going to eat. And if you're a Republican or if you're a Democrat, how are you going to ensure specific redress to specific folks, Black Americans being the ones that we're talking about tonight, to ensure that we can all thrive? That has not been the narrative. I know that is similar to what Democrats have talked about, but we aren't seeing that translated into Black communities, are we? So even they aren't there yet. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. And that's a good point she made. It's a good point how she is really calling for every voting American with the capability, you know, if you have the capability to vote, to say that these are the people in office that we want, this is the expectation. We are expecting to be able to have these things take place while you're in office. We want these particular things. We need to be able to elect officials who stand for and are going to support the things that are for the betterment of every American, not just black people. For every American, every taxpaying citizen, every person that is over here grinding, getting their hustle, whether you are employed with, by somebody or you are employed by yourself, 
you have your own business, regardless of what you're doing to legally generate income in this country, you should have a say in who you want to vote for and the options, the policies, the things that they're putting in place, the laws should benefit and reflect your goals, your values and pursuits in a positive way. So I, I can agree with her on that. So therefore, with that being said, we have to definitely dive in and do our homework as to what, whatever party that you choose. Um, whatever you have to go with at the end of the day, great people, you have to go with based off of your mindset, your values, your goals, and your household. But do it with clear understanding and knowledge of whoever you're voting for, what they stand for, and are, is it in the best interest for you? Is it in the best interest of our country? Because it hasn't been since your boy been in office. Janky Joe. But anyway, I, I can agree with that. You know where I stand on Red Pill all day, boo. And never going back to the blue side. And I definitely am going to stand on that. You heard me. It is going to impact you. It is going to impact you. It will impact you, whether you vote or not. Yes, it will. Have a great day, morning, evening, night, wherever you are. I appreciate all your support. Get in this comment section. Let me know what you guys thinking about this, how you feel about what they're saying. And, you know, where you stand, many of you share about, you know, I have some people, I don't know if you're subscribed or if you just hop in from time to time and check out some videos, but you do share that you are, um, you're not on either side. And I just love having that, that type of a real talk conversation. And we are cordial and respectful. That's, those are the thinkers. These are the people that I like to talk with because we're not going to agree with everybody. It's, and that's okay. That's life. That's what it's about. All right, good people. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. And I appreciate your support. Yeah.